What's up, y'all? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, bringing you all with another Next Gen Diecast review provided by my good friends at Circle B Diecast. Make sure to use that promo code OBBYT to get $5 off of shipping on your next purchase. It's got to be $30 or more, otherwise that shit will not work. But today, it's going to be on the Diecast, so you can only get in the metal chassis version at the moment, but this will be coming out to the public very soon for the ARC scale. This is a Diecast that I actually had the pleasure of seeing in person in my second race of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season um, in person. Today, it is going to be on William Byron. 2022 Exalta Dawn's the Throwback Chevrolet Camaro Z01 1LE4 Hender Motorsports. Now, <laughs> we let's go ahead and break the elephant out of the room, guys. You guys know what this throwback is, especially for anybody who grew up in you know the 2000s slash 2010s era of NASCAR. Um, definitely is screaming me. Um, but yeah, this is a Dawn's throwback on you know G, uh, you know the uh, the vice president of Hender Motorsports. Jeff Gordon, the Hall of Famer, the one that we all know and love. You know, as much as I love the Rainbow Warrior car, guys, I'm so glad we finally, I mean, we finally got, you know, the freaking Flames car. It is just about damn time, guys. I was just waiting for this day to come. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Rainbow Warrior car, but I am so happy we finally got this in the throwback, uh, you know, for uh, Darlington, which is really darn cool. But anyway, it's a good game the Sidecast Review, the official unboxing of William Byron's 2022 Exalta Don's Throwback Killer. And alrighty, guys, we got this diecast out of this box, and man, oh man, let me tell you what, man, I am so happy that I went to the Darlington race back in spring. All uh, right, for the Goodyear 400. My only main reason was because I wanted to witness some of these cool throwbacks that we had. And this one really caught my eye. But what's even more better, guys, is that this car nearly, and I mean, as you guys already saw by, you know, the, all the highlights and, and, you know, the year in review, this car nearly won the Goodyear 400. But, you know, it came up short against, you know, your 2022 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Joey Logano. And in typical Joey Logano fashion, you know, these two were just racing hard at the end. And Logano did the little uh, bump and run. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I supposedly, I guess, uh, those two made contact earlier on in the race or, you know, coming into, like, I don't know, like, later into the race. And, unfortunately, William Byron was one of the victims. And let's just say, yeah, William Byron wasn't really, you know, a quiet son of a gun after the race. He actually was pretty vocal. And, you know, he did got to some, you know, some, uh, you know, some heated interviews, you know, <laughs> coming into that. I mean, um, heck, just ask Danny Hamlin, you know, what happened at Texas. <laughs> so, yeah, this has been kind of a hot year, you know, no pun intended with the flames on this car. But um, I know the biggest thing right off the bat a lot of people are going to not like is, of course, the number is really shifted forward. And, you know, judging by the photos right here, I mean, just to show you guys, I'm not bullshitting you guys. I actually went to this race, so here's the photo of the actual car right there. As you can see right there, the only thing, I mean, I think the 24 is supposed to be just a little bit more shifted to the right. Um, that's probably, I mean, I'm used to the number placement now, but as you can see right here, everything is just so crammed. Like, you see where the NASCAR throwback logo is, the NASCAR salutes logo. It's literally, like, as you can see right there, like, pretty much touching that 24. So, so it's pretty crammed. Uh, they probably could have squeezed it in right there. I think they just wanted to, you know, correlate with the flames right there. But you can see that this metallic blue, it, I mean, it is an Exalta Henry Motorsports diecast, so it is going to have a metallic flake finish on it, and that blue is absolutely beautiful. And, um, the camera's not really doing its justice, guys, but we do got that nice day glow yellow that is pretty iconic for Jeff Gordon. Um, and you see also the metallic uh, rims as well, which, uh, you know, a lot of people didn't realize that these are actually metallic. Uh, they, they were gunmetal, but these ones are actually metallic, so there is a finish on them. And we also got the good white, e e the white Goodyear Eagle tires, which are really cool. Um, my God, guys. Um, this is such a cool looking diecast. I mean, even though, like I said, you know, this big space right here, I don't know. I kind of feel like they probably. I mean, some of the throwbacks kind of work, but you know, man, if you're going to do like a Donson throwback, guys, they probably should at least move the number back to where it was, you know, or at least try to make it or do it like what the track house cars do, guys. Like, look at Ross Chastain's having healthcare car and, you know, Daniel Schwartz's cars, Um, you know, like line it up exactly where the A pillar is. Like, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly center, but, you know, make it at least, you know, pretty appropriate to what the actual car looks like. Um, you know, that's just my two cents on it. But yeah, this is just, I, I am so glad we finally got ourselves this, uh, this car guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love the Rainbow Oreo car, but like how many times did they did a throwback on this guys? Jeff Gordon did it, you know, a, a throwback to it in 2015. The William Byron did a few years later. Um, just, I was just like, all right, the Rainbow Oreo car is cool enough. I'm like, we got to get this flames cars, man, because you know, he debuted this iconic paint scheme in 2001. And this is supposed to be based off of his 2007 car, which, you know, I absolutely love because you know now and that was a pretty special year for the gordon fans because you know he did got himself he did got himself you know multiple and i mean absolutely multiple wins probably should have been your championship uh you know winner in 2007 but jimmy johnson was able to you know crack the code on that um 
But yeah, dude. Oh my god, this thing is absolutely beautiful. I think he also, I think, tied Dale Earnhardt for like the most uh, uh, wins in the in the NASCAR Cup Series, as far as I know. So. That was a pretty big year for, you know, this Hall of Famer, Jeff Gordon. Um, you know, I mean, do you want to see more about this car, guys? I mean, if you're a longtime NASCAR fan, of course, this one is going to catch your eye. And you're going to be like, like, even if you're like the most basic NASCAR fan ever, you are going to recognize what Jeff Gordon's car is. And this one absolutely looked amazing at the Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Um, just absolutely just immaculate like i said my only thing i got to criticize is just that 24 it should just be just a little shifted um you know probably could go off where those edges right there because it's really crammed here same thing with this side i mean well actually this side doesn't look too bad it looks pretty accurate to what it is on the actual car um but we do got, of course, you know, I know quality control like usual, paint ship city everywhere. But um, I even like how they even put William Byron's name right there in yellow, which is pretty, you know, appropriate to, you know, Jeff Gordon's car. But really nice, guys. But let me tell you what, guys. As cool as this throwback is, guys, I'm kind of actually liking uh, that, that, that uh, if you guys saw in the NASCAR Xfinity Series, uh, Darlington Fall Race, uh, they actually, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> did a better inter interpretation of um, Jeff Gordon's uh, 2007 DuPont car, which I think was uh, the Alpha Prime Racing Team for uh, Ryan Ellis. If you guys saw that car, guys, I am so ashamed that that car didn't make, uh, you know, couldn't get the licensing for that because that looks so damn cool, guys. They even had, like, you know, uh, they even changed some of the lettering where it's yellow right here it's supposed to represent the nicorette logo like there was so much detail and effort to this i mean this one right here still kind of takes the cake because we've never seen you know a throwback of this scheme before um besides like i just mentioned with the ryan ellis car but just my god guys absolutely beautiful i kind of wish they would have actually and this is the one thing that kind of really gets on my nerves with exalta like i kind of wish they would just I don't know, find a way to, like, put that oval, all right, that, that DuPont oval logo. Like, I understand Exalta is basically what DuPont was, but just, I mean, it doesn't look terrible. I mean, it, it, but just you see right there that this paint scheme is supposed to not overlap. Like, that logo is not supposed to overlap where those flames are. The DuPont logo is supposed to be there, but it's not. I wish there was a little more effort right there. I mean, it looks like, actually, uh, this is not a black outline. It's actually, you know, uh, a nice uh, dark blue outline, which is what the DuPont logo is supposed to be. So, at least they did something right there. But just those flames, man. Look at those flames. Absolutely beautiful, man. I'm glad they added these flames right there. You see, the, you know, portions of the yellow as well. Um, if you've ever been close to a flame, I definitely do not encourage you guys to. Um, that's what a flame would look like. So, um, especially how these, how these next-gen cars have been, guys. I mean, just ask Kevin Harvick, Brad Kozlowski. I mean, aren't these sons of bitches quite hot? All right. Um, and speaking of what is not so hot is we got some more uh, funky-looking uh, logo placements right there in the two race winner stickers because, you know, this car was ran after William Byron got his fir uh, first and only two wins of the 2022 NASCAR Cup Series season at Martinsville and Atlanta. But now it's going to see the top side comparison of the DuPont scheme. And you guys can see right here, of course, I... Can't believe I'm saying this, guys, but heck, the COT absolutely looks amazing. This is a 2008 car, guys, but it's pretty much exactly the same. It's the only other car that I have a good comparison to. So this actually feels like a true, cool Don's throwback comparison because I actually have the actual car to compare it to, um, even though it's from 2008. But it's still pretty much exactly the same. Um, nothing really changed. But you see what I mean, guys? Look, just look how much better that DuPont logo looks compared to the Exalta logo. That's just, I don't know, it just fits it absolutely fits i just wish exalta could just i don't know get rid of the a all right just get rid of the a we already know what exalta is do you need the a i guess for a brand recognition or something like that and then of course you know i know they couldn't really put the pepsi logo and the nicorette logo but i kind of wish liberty university would have changed their logo to like yellow or to just to match it right here and then i wish one of these sponsors right here like maybe like even valvoline i think valvoline could have like rebranded their uh, logo and put it right here to represent the pepsi logo they could have put a little more effort into it but you know we, we got the best we got and you know what man i'm happy for it um i actually see that the flames actually have extended a lot more and look at my camera being all wonky <laughs> i guess you say my camera is uh you know uh going up in flames just like this paint scheme i mean man but i'm kind of bummed i mean i kind of wish that this car actually did one because my god it was such a beauty to look at man i couldn't stop staring at this thing that this thing was just beautiful look at that little tiny exalta logo man it just shows you how you know uh different these uh generation of cars are guys from you know the uh cot days to uh the gen 7 days i mean definitely these things look a lot more stock than whatever the hell these things were you can blame brian france for this monstrosity but look at the diecast quality man doesn't even compare but we're not here to talk about that guys um but that's pretty much all i gotta say about this diecast guys hopefully you guys 
guys enjoyed this, and I definitely would absolutely recommend picking this up. And save your guys some money, guys, uh, with that promo code over BYT for $5 off the shipping. And, um, yeah, this is going to wrap her up right here on the uh, William Byron 2022 uh, Exalta Dawn's Throwback Chevrolet Camaro ZL1 1L Leaf Forehead Motorsports. Comment, like, subscribe, and this has been OBB. Hope you guys keep your flames on and keep on rocking and appreciate you guys' the continued support of these diecast reviews. And, uh, heck, I'll see you guys next time. And, uh, yeah, take care, everyone.